The following presentation is brought to you by BIFA Training, part of the British International Freight Association, which is also known as BIFA. BIFA is responsible for four aims or key task areas. These are representation and lobbying, information and advice, promotion of freight forwarders, and training provision. In co terms 2010, are produced by the International Chamber of Commerce and we strongly recommend you obtain a copy of the terms from the International Chamber or from BIFA whose details appear at the end of this presentation. INCO terms were first introduced in the 1930s and have been regularly reviewed ever since. They are due to change again on the 1st of January 2011. INCO terms are designed to facilitate international trade and seller and buyer should make sure that they are incorporated into the sales contract, that they use the most appropriate term for the transaction being undertaken and that they specify the exact location where delivery takes place. They should also make certain that everybody who is involved with the transaction understand which term applies. The key changes which are being brought in on the 1st of January include four of the current terms disappear. Delivered at Frontier, Delivered X Ship, Delivered X Key and Delivered Duty Unpaid. Delivered duty unpaid was used by quite a lot of companies. As a result, it is being replaced with two new terms, delivered at place and delivered at terminal. The new INCO terms are broken down into two categories, not four. Cargo security responsibilities are now also included and finally, they can be used for domestic transport. The new groups of terms are groups which cover any mode of transport, for example, air, sea, road or rail, whilst there are specific terms which should be used for sea and waterway movements only. The new terms include for any mode of transport, X works, free carrier, carriage paid to, carriage and insurance paid, delivered at place, delivered at terminal, and finally delivered to duty paid. The rules for sea and waterways mode include some of the same terms again. For example, you can use X works. But when it comes to the F terms, you should use free on board or free alongside ship. In the C terms, CFR cost and freight or CIF cost insurance and freight. And finally, you can use any of the D terms we mentioned earlier. It's important that sellers should always quote the place at which delivery takes place. In our example, FCA London Heathrow Airport. It's also important that sellers only use valid INCO terms and not adjustments of them. Generally speaking, INCO terms will begin with one of four letters. If the term begins with the letter E, the seller has not included any transport expenses in the invoice price. If the term begins with the letter F, the seller has included the transport expenses up to the main port or airport of loading. If the term begins with the letter C, the seller has included the costs up to the main port or airport of destination. And finally, if the term begins with the letter D, the seller has included all the costs, usually up to the buyer's premises. If we take an example of an air freight movement, this is how the INCO terms might look. 
As you will see on the screen, on the left-hand side, we have an image of the seller's factory, and on the right-hand side, the buyer's, with the two airports in between. If the seller dispatches goods and does not include any transport expenses, they are selling the goods on X-Works terms, which means that all the transport expenses will be paid by the buyer at destination. Because it's air freight, if the cargo is prepaid up to the departure airport, the term should be FCA and not FOB as that's specific for the C mode. If the seller prepays the costs up to the destination airport, then they should use an INCO term beginning with the letter C. In this example, carriage paid to, as the price does not include insurance. If the seller includes all the charges through to the main point of destination, they can use one of the new D terms, delivered at place. Remember, INCO terms don't make it clear who insures the cargo, only the contract of sale will make that certain. And finally, INCO terms are the cause of many disputes. It's really important to make sure that you use the most appropriate term. Now let's look at INCO terms in action. Here you will see an image of a car which is being loaded onto a ship. During the course of loading, the car falls into the water. It's important to note that the car fell into the water, the far side of the quay from which it had been lifted. The car itself was being sold on FOB terms. And we now need to look at who is responsible for making the insurance claim? Is it the seller or the buyer? Please remember the car had been lifted across the ship before it fell into the water. Now click the pause button to stop the presentation and complete this exercise. Then click the play button to continue. You should have found that the term FOB requires the seller to place the goods on board the ship. In this case, the goods did not get on board the ship, and as a result, the seller is responsible to make the insurance claim. Now let's look at how INCO terms affect value. A seller produces a consignment of goods, and the price, including their profit, is £100. They can sell these goods on X works terms for £100 as they're not required to pay any transport expenses to move them. The buyer may require them to deliver the goods on board a ship at a port. This means they will incur additional cost and the cost might be in the order of £70. The seller can now, however, use an F term, and in our example, they will use FOB. The buyer may require them to deliver the goods up to the main port of destination. Again, the seller incurs extra cost, and therefore the price has to be higher. In our example, £50 cost of C expenses are incurred. But now the seller can use a C term and therefore the goods will be delivered to the port of destination. Should the buyer require that the goods are delivered to their doorstep, then extra costs are incurred including unloading and delivery and also duty and tax. But now the seller can use a D term, in our example, delivered duty paid which means that goods which would have sold X works for £100 are now being sold for £340. Here is your chance to participate in an exercise. Assume a consignment is to move by C and the following costs apply. Will you please estimate what the X works value for this cargo would be? what the FOB value would be, what the CIF value would be, and finally, what the delivered paid value would be. 
Now, click the pause button to stop the presentation and complete this exercise. Then, click the play button to continue. You should have found that the X works value was £1,000, the FOB value was 1125 the CIF value was 1455 and that the delivered duty paid value was £1,790. BIFA training supports companies involved in the international movement of goods and the provision of forwarding services with a catalogue of training programmes. These include International Freight and Documentation Customs Procedures for Import and Export Cargo Aviation Security Dangerous Goods and many more. For further information on course details, dates and venues you can visit www.bifa.org or call 0208 844 2266.